Hello, Hollywood. Good morning. Welcome to today's Walk of Fame Star Ceremony. I would like to give a shout out to our fans watching our live video stream presented by our media partner, Variety. I'm Rana Godbon, President and CEO of the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce, which is presenting this program. For today's Walk of Fame ceremony, we are honoring an extraordinary man who is revered in various entertainment fields. Today, Hollywood honors Nigel Lithgow. <laughs> Woo! was a 2,697 star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. <laughs> but before we invite him up to the stage, first let me tell you about our honoree. Nigel Lithgow was born in England. At a young age, Nigel began tap dancing and became the only person to dance in, choreograph, uh, direct and produce the Royal Variety performance for Her Majesty the Queen of England. A three-time Emmy winner, Nigel has been a driving force in the world of performing arts as a creator, executive producer, and judge on So You Think You Can Dance, which has won 16 Emmy Awards. He's also the executive producer of the hit show, American Idol, which has been nominated for nearly 70 Emmy Awards. And he's currently working on a new unscripted television series, So You Think You Can Fight. In 2015, Nigel was nominated for a Tony Award for the Broadway musical sensation On the Town. Nigel produced a charity spinoff, Idol Gives Back, which raised more than 170 million for an array of worthy causes. That's outstanding. In 2007, Idol Gives Back received the prestigious Governor's Award, the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences highest honor. Additionally, Nigel was awarded the International Emmy Founders Award, recognizing him for his imprint on the TV industry. Nigel also co-founded the Dizzy Feed Foundation, a nonprofit organization that works to support, improve, and increase access to dance in underprivileged communities. This became the American Dance Movement in 2018 and was awarded a $1 million grant by the American Heart Association. In 2010, he created National Dance Day. Recognized by a congressional resolution, National Dance Day falls on the last Saturday in September and promotes dance as part of a healthy, active lifestyle. Nigel has been awarded the Ellis Island International Medal of Honor, been named on Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth's Birthday Honors List, and been awarded an Order of the British Empire for his work in education, charity, and the arts. He serves on the board of directors for American Dance Movement, the Wallace Annenberg Center for the Performing Arts, Turnaround Arts, LA's Best, and the USC Kaufman Board of Counselors. And I'm gonna ask you to all join me in wishing him a very, very happy birthday because he's sharing his special day with us today. <laughs> and now, please help me welcome to the stage Nigel Lithgow. from Nigel, we have three guest speakers who would like to say a few words about our honoree. 
Our first speaker portrayed Jenna Wade on the most successful evening drama of its time, Dallas, which was seen by over 300 million viewers worldwide every week between 1983 and 1988. She then displayed her considerable com comedic talents in the box office match The Naked Gun from the files of Police Squad series and reprised her role in The Naked Gun Two and a Half and The Naked Gun 33 and a Third, The Final Insult. She starred in the movie Breakfast with Einstein as well as the Showtime original movie, Haley Wagner Star, a family-themed movie with a valuable message for young teenagers. She has been an ambassador of the Dream Foundation for the past 18 years, helping to fulfill the dreams of adults battling terminal illnesses. Please welcome to the stage, actress Priscilla Presley. Nigel, 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 where do I start? There's a lot of notes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was actually longer than this, but then I thought I have to cut it short. I only have two minutes. Um, first of all, congratulations. Truly, truly, truly. We all know you as a director, a producer, a television dance competition judge, a television personality. But I had the privilege to know the man behind the success. We first met at one of Irving Azov's party. We sat next to each other and became instant friends. It was 2006, the fifth season of American Idol. He invited me to the show. I was impressed, not just with the show, but how he ran it. His attention to detail, his dedication, his care, his mood, his critiques. He was in charge. As an artist, he demands perfection. There is no nonsense with Nigel. His pupils have to deliver the goods. In 2007, Nigel called me and said he wanted to do a duet with Elvis, not him personally. <laughs> the song was If I Can Dream, for American Idol, obviously. Who did I think could pull it off, he asked. Names were mentioned, but Nigel said, what about Celine Dion? I was silent. I liked the idea, but I thought of my daughter. At the time, she was in a very different place artistically. I felt maybe she wouldn't go for it. Maybe pink. <laughs> I told Nigel that I was a little concerned. He said that Celine's husband already approved, and I reluctantly said, okay. When the time came for me to see the result, did you make a face? I just said that I lied, I lied to you. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're kidding. <laughs> well, I would, I would know that he would definitely approve. Well, when the time came for me to see the result, I drove to CBS at Inchy Room at 11 p.m. in the evening, of course. When I walked in, Simon Fuller was sitting in the back, in the back of Nigel, I think for moral support, right? <laughs> I walked over to sit next to Nigel. He then showed me the video. During this whole entire time, I never said, I said nothing. It was very, very quiet. Um, I, I um, asked him to show me the video again. He did, and again, and again. I was speechless, and I asked him to play it over and over, if you remember. <laughs> I called my daughter I was, I was, as I was driving home at 1 in the morning. I told her I saw the video. No one else could have done what Celine did. It was truly breathtaking. She did see the video, and she also saw the thing, same thing as you know. Congratulations on that. <laughs> um, Nigel pulled it off as he usually does, with class. I don't think, Nigel, that you could have ever imagined that your name would be included on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. My friend, you deserve it. And I thank for your, your friendship that we've had all these years. Before we introduce our next speaker, we have a few celebrities in the audience who are here today supporting Nigel. 
Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a round of applause for actress Finola Hughes. <laughs> Choreographer Mary Murphy. Singer Lionel Richie. <laughs> we also have with us here today the British Council General, Emily Cloak. I'd like to give an acknowledgement to the Managing Director of JIO and Chairperson of the Board for the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce, Nicole Mahalka. <laughs> and finally, I'd like to give a shout out to our LAPD officers that are here with us today, and especially Captain Brent McGuire. Thank you so much all for your service. Next up, we have two very special people in Nigel's life who are here today to speak about his impact in the entertainment world. His two sons, Simon and Christopher Lipko. First, we will start with Simon, who is showrunner, executive producer, and president, president of Legacy Production. He has received three Emmy nominations and one Producers Guild of America nomination. In 2006, he received a People's Choice Award for his work on American Idol. Christopher works for Warner Brothers Television Department in Los Angeles. Some of his credits include Ellen's Game of Games, Soccer Superstar, Who Are You, and True Story with Ed Holmes and Randall Park. Christopher has also written over 22 theatrical plays that have been seen in theaters across the country, including Raleigh, Nashville, Houston, and Pasadena. Please welcome to the stage Simon and Christopher Lithgow. Thank you so much. Well, I'm Simon Lithgow, the better looking, more successful, and favorite son of Nigel Lithgow, and to my left-hand side is my right-hand man, the runner-up, Christopher Lithgow. Thank you, Simon. I am actually uh, able to introduce myself. I'm the one that's not adopted. Well, if I was adopted, why does Dad keep introducing me <laughs> as his younger brother? And, uh, I mean, we're practically clones. I mean, look at him and look at me. We're me, me, me. It's always about you, Simon, or whatever they called you in the orphanage. Wow. But wow. today is about our father, Dr. Nigel Bruce Lithgow, OBE, and his many achievements in the entertainment industry. And we're going to talk a bit about the man behind the stars. We're here to talk about our dad, the legacy he's created, and this is basically a toast to our dad. Toast? Yeah, toast. You told me it was a roast. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. Why would I do that? Well, so that I would say all the mean and nasty things, and you would say all the kind, sweet things, and come off as the not-adopted brother. Wow. <laughs> well, if I'd have thought of that, that'd be genius, but no, I didn't. Well, now I can't mention the time when Dad fell asleep smoking a cigarette and set fire to the cat. No. <laughs> No, don't do that. Don't bring up the cat. And I can't mention the fact that when he asked his sons to speak today, we didn't know how many sons we don't know about might turn up. No, don't go there. Don't go there. What about the time when he took his, on that father-son glorious trip to Battersea Park to see the state fair? And we walked around for hours to see the rides, and then a cop came over and said it shut down in 1957. True, but no, he did take us on a ride that day. He did actually uh, take us on a ride in a taxi from the station, yes. But he did make it up to us by going to taking us on a first family vacation to Disney World. That's true. I think we were both in our 20s at the time. But... And uh, thank God for the mini bar of Bibbidi Bobbidi Boos. <laughs> One day at a time, Chris. So, Dad, in all seriousness, though, we've heard about all your success. And it's the small stuff. When we were kids that we remember, like we heard the fact that you are the only person that produced, directed, choreographed, and actually danced on the Royal Variety Show for Her Majesty the Queen. 
And that's because you're the king, Dad. And we're here to announce your next project. Starring across the street in Hamilton, we have King Nigel. <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Dad. <laughs> Thought you'd appreciate that for your birthday. It's beautiful. King Nigel. So there you go. Happy birthday. And, um, you know, you've been creating stars all your life, and now you get to have one of your own. Yeah. Thank you very much. And without doubt, we thank you for being a great role model. <laughs> 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 And we count our lucky stars that we get to call you dad. <laughs> so, on behalf of us, our, your grandkids, not our grandkids, your grandkids, Kai and Tiger and Dominique. And my wife Becky and your other grandkids, George, Leo, and the ones we don't know about. <laughs> Congratulations, dad. We love you. Congratulations. Happy birthday. Thanks. We love you, man. Thank you. Thank you. You're the best, dad. It wasn't that bad, was it, Dad? I'm going to get the last word. No, you're not. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're the one that I want. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> they, they worried me all week. They worried me and sent me emails saying, I've not written this, Dad. I've not written it. I'm not the cruel one. Uh, we, we've fallen out. We hate each other. Oh, it was a bit terrible. <laughs> the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce administers the Walk of Fame on behalf of the City of Los Angeles. And on behalf of our Los Angeles City Council member, Mitchell Farrell, the city has provided a beautiful resolution that we'd now like to present to you. Congratulations. And on behalf of the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce, we now declare today, Nigel Lithgow Day in Hollywood. Wow. <laughs> well, that's great. That's great. <laughs> it's now the time that you've all been waiting for. It's time to hear from our honorees. So ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you, Nigel Lithgow. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Wow. Whew. What a birthday present. I mean, really, and, and looking at the marquee at the Pantages, it, it's, just, it's just incredible. It's something you could never, ever have dreamed of. Um, I've, I've got some notes because in this, I want to thank so many people. I guess that's in case I forget my name. <laughs> um, I'm so nervous, it's frightening. Um, today, in truth, is thanking all of the people that actually helped me come here today to receive this incredible accolade. First of all, I guess I should thank the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce, Rana and Anna, thank you so much. Priscilla, thank you for your kind words today. Um, you became a friend of mine at a time that I really needed it, and I'm so grateful that we're still dear friends today. Thank you so much. Boys, thank you for your speech. I'll come back to you a little later on, I think. Um, in his absence, I'd like to thank Simon Fuller. He created Pop Idol, which then became American Idol, and bullied me and pushed me into creating So You Think You Can Dance, both shows of which have changed my life, my lifestyle, entirely and brought me here to America. So thank you, Simon. Kenny Warwick. A lot of you know that Kenny and I met each other on Merseyside, Liverpool, when we were 12 years of age. We were sat next to each other in a schoolroom class, both in the same class, even though Kenny tells everybody he's four years younger than me. We have had an incredible journey throughout our lives, whether it was working in a departmental store in Liverpool, dancing, choreographing, producing, directing, and working together on American Idol. 
And without his partnership, his patience, his creative input, American Idol would never, ever have been as good as it was. Thank you, Kenny. Mike Darnell is here. He finally agreed to be here yesterday at the last minute. And, and remarkably, he was on time. <laughs> Mike, I've got to say that as the Fox executive uh, that uh, helped us on American Idol, you are without doubt the most creative company executive I've ever had the pleasure of working with. When you would come into the edit in the hands of the brilliant Bill Durandi and Charlie, Charlie Boyd, whatever you changed or whatever you wanted to change was always the right thing. And even if you weren't sure about it, you would always come up with the idea that would make it better. I can only thank you for that. You may, and I've always said this, be diminutive in size, but you are enormous in talent. Thank you so much. Brings me on to So You Think You Can Dance. Jeff Thacker, if you had not have been so incredibly smart in choosing the choreographers that you chose on that first season of American Idol, we would never have made season two, never mind the 16 seasons that So You Think You Can Dance was on television. And hopefully, it will continue after the COVID, uh, and we'll continue with that series. But also, James Breen. The program was in such safe hands with you at the helm of it, bringing that team together, that I felt really comfortable in stepping in front of the camera uh, and being a judge on the show with a lady that I adore, Mary Murphy. Thank you so much for flying in today. You made me laugh, you made me cry, you made me deaf, darling. My left ear is getting much better nowadays, but without your expertise, without your humor, and without your wonderful critiques of those young dancers, again, so you think you can dance would never have been the same either. So thank you so much for that. Thank you to Kat Dealey for being such a wonderful host of that show. You know, I've got so many friends here that I've made over the 20 years that I've been now here, and so many of my English friends, uh, like Lou and Zoe, um, Marilyn, Laurie, and my ex-wife, Bonnie, couldn't be here today because of the COVID quarantines in the UK. But Mike and Tracy Besson have made the journey here from the Channel Islands, Jersey, through Barbados, through the Elsa, hurricane through more COVID tests than glasses of champagne, which I know they wouldn't be happy with. But I'm just so happy you've made up for that in the few days you've been here. Uh, thank you so much for coming today. So many of you here today and uh, in the hotel that I'm so sorry we couldn't all be together because of COVID protocols, but we'll see you later uh, up there. So many of you have become such great friends. I've had many personal relationships that really have brought incredible memories and things that I will treasure for the rest of my life. Uh, and I guess after two heart attacks and peritonitis, I'm not sure how long that's gonna be. But uh, thank you, my doctor, Reed Wilson, is here today, and I wanna thank you very much. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here, never mind winning anything. Uh, but, you know, I, I'm really, really raring to go. As somebody has said, I'm doing a brand new series uh, with boxing called So You Think You Can Fight uh, with my new friend, Ryan Kavanagh. Lovely to see your mum and dad, Leslie and Jack, here again. Uh, and we're also putting on uh, boxing bouts in New York's uh, incredible Garden Arena uh, every Tuesday, first Tuesday in the month. Uh, and I'm thrilled to be doing that. Uh, and I'm so excited and I've got so much to do. Uh, I love it. And to be frank with you, old age has come into my life at the wrong time. 
I, 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 you know, somebody once said to me that life is like um, a roll of toilet paper. The closer you get to the end of it, the faster it goes. And it's really true. It's like one of those, one of those Forrest Gump moments. You know, my mama told me life was like a used toilet paper. Right, anyway, moving on. You're not here to enjoy yourselves. Uh, I don't know if you realize, but this ceremony has been canceled twice now. Uh, Anna, bless her, has lived with this for over a year. It was originally going to be on April the 1st, and we sent out invitations, and I thought, when you read those and you say, Nig I was only pretending I was ill, it's all right. Nigel is receiving a star. Let's hope everything's all right there, huh? And I thought, when you got the invitation on April the 1st, it read, you know, Nigel Lithgow is receiving a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Please join him on April Fool's Day. And I thought you'd all go, oh yeah, really? The next one was gonna be November the 5th, which in England is Guy Fawkes Night. Which, and Guy Fawkes, if you know, was uh, the guy who was gonna blow up the Houses of Parliament uh, in 1605. And of course, the Brits celebrate that day by fireworks and everything else. Uh, and, and, and I'm sure maybe, maybe in January here in America, you'll have Insurrection Day. Who knows? <laughs> so today helps me with my memory because, of course, it's my birthday. Uh, and the only thing that I've been lacking in, as I get older is my memory. Uh, and, and it really is. I, I'm just, if it hadn't been my birthday, I would have forgotten to turn up. And, and there are a lot of other people that should have been invited, but I couldn't remember their names. <laughs> you know, nowadays, in the old days, getting lucky meant that you met a nice girl and you had a great night out. For me now, getting lucky is when I walk into a room and remember why I walked in there, you know? <laughs> It's one of those things. And, and the trouble is, when I do remember what I'm doing, I tend to put it off to another day, and then I've forgotten what it was I remembered. Many years ago, I helped create a support group for procrastinators, and they haven't held a meeting yet. <laughs> I, I just want to come to finally say something in all seriousness, and that is, uh, as you know, I come from Liverpool. My dad was uh, a docker on Liverpool docks, a longshoreman, I think you call it in America, was uh, a longshoreman on Liverpool and Birkenhead docks. Uh, we were a low-income family. My dance teacher would actually give me free dancing lessons because we had problems. And I just want everybody out there, every young person, to realize that you can achieve the most incredible things if you are consistent, if you've got the courage, if you realize that life is tough and that you've got to be tougher, if you realize that you will fail, but failure isn't the end, failure just spurs you on to the successes. And you should treat the failures and the successes with the same enthusiasm because without failures, success will mean nothing. It's it's going to be a journey, and life is a very, very exciting journey, and you never know how it is going to turn out. Well, for me, this has been a very special day. And just one other point, you know, courage sometimes is the ability to cover up how bloody nervous you are. And hopefully, I'm doing that right now. Uh, but good luck. Stay, stay true to yourselves and have the biggest dreams ever. Finally, I want to come back to my two boys. Many of you know that they fell out very badly a number of years ago. They have just recently reunited. Watching them up here today really hit me emotionally. And really, I wanted to hit them. <laughs> but it just goes to show that at the end of the day, what means more than anything is family and friends. And I want to thank my family and all of my friends that have come to support me today. 
that you've made it very, very special for me. Thank you for being here. God bless you all. Stay safe. And now you're gonna all help us celebrate by cheering as we unveil the star for our star today. Let's hear it again for Nigel Lidgo.
did it by himself, you know? Yeah, yeah. 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 standing in all the whole thing. Solo? Solo! Can we do right Anna. Anna, after this, one more solo, we need it. How about kneeling? Because they needed to adjust. Solo after. Okay. <laughs>